Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's been a while since I shot some video for y'all. I'm using some pretty lightweight stuff. This is these, uh, these Hatsan Vortex Express. They, they generally make all the guns do what they're supposed to do. Um, most of the hat sand guns were doing it already even before they made these uh, different pellets and, and really these aren't any lighter but they do come out faster um, 8.18 grains but um, the, the, the weight is more evenly distributed in this little pellet whereas uh, most of the weight is in the head of a lot of the other dome pellets this one's um, really evenly Distributed. These napiers are 7.8 grains, and a lot of times the lubed napiers will come out faster. But I don't. I haven't really noticed any advantage to these yet. And 22, if you can get the napier hunters, oh, they're awesome. It's like a Crossman Premier Heavy that comes out at the same speed. They're great in 22. I don't know enough about them in 177. These right here, Marksman. At one time, Marksman marketed the H&N FTT, a.k.a. the Beeman FTS pellet. I believe it's 8.44 grains. Excellent pellet. Matter of fact, this is an excellent, looks like used to be $9. Um, I got them for $2 at the Air Gun Show. I would have bought every can, but they only had one can left. Some guy came in and I think he said he sold 50 cans of these. Excellent pellet if you see, you know, Marksman had some good stuff. Especially if it's German. They had some good stuff. If you just read around a little bit at the fine print, you'll find out. Um, and that's a lot of the, the game in the air gun industry is uh, take somebody else's product and, and put your own sticker on it, basically. Uh, but with this Webley, you know, we, we kind of know the story on Webley. They, they, uh, they were the best. They were the best when they were making guns in Birmingham, and and they're, they, if you can get a hold of of one of those old ones, they're expensive, but they're pretty much about the pinnacle of of spring piston air guns. And they they had done that in the 80s, you know, uh, excellent guns. So now we're having to contend with Turkish versions, and I sold a lot of uh, Turkish Stingrays, and I heard a lot of bitching, and everybody deserved to gripe. Webley may never recover from the transition from uh, England to Turkey, because um, basically they didn't have any quality control when they switched. And they tried to charge the same price. Um, this nowadays, here in the U.S., out of all the Webleys that I've tried, pistols, rifles, everything, the 177 Webley Stingray Quattro has been the finest um, of the Webleys. And, you know, for a long time it was priced damn near $300, uh, 270 or something. But, uh, now they're a little more affordable, and they have a, a, a 22 version. Um, I think they call it the Black Hawk, but it's actually the same thing as the Stingray. We've we've got two of the Black Hawks actually. Um, I love this beautiful stock, but the plastic version has a thumbhole stock that I normally don't care for. But it's so ergonomic. I mean, the way the thumb wraps in here to the, from the thumb hole stock and goes around the safety, all this is cut out. It, it's really cool. It's really cool. The stock needs to be filled. I mean, it's just a cheap plastic hollow stock. It's not a good ho not a good plastic stock like maybe Diana or Norca makes. But uh, this dude right here. I knew it was going to be good when I got it out of the box and shot it. And it was chronographing like 930, 940 with the Crossman Premieres, which is uh, way hotter than it's supposed to. It's supposed to generally get around 850. 
with the Crossman Premieres. And I would run some through the Crony, but the sun has gotten in a position to where I just get error. It, uh, now that it's settled in a little bit, I've tuned it, I've lube tuned it. It's liking these Hat Sand Vortex pellets in 177, which is good. Because I, I, I've had trouble, um, the German guns don't seem to like those. But the Turkish barrels, they, they like them. They, the Turkish barrels love all the FTTs. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, Turkish barrels are good barrels. Uh, you know, when when they started doing the the Turkish thing, everybody was comparing them to Chinese. And uh, the Chinese just haven't got the barrel thing down yet. You know, most of all of the air gun, after you get the, all the moving parts synchronized and smoothed out where they're going to do the same thing every time, you know, at least for a couple thousand shots before you have to replace the spring and piston seal, um, mo most of the game is barrel and trigger in this type of gun right here. Um, if you pay more than $400 retail for a gun, you should have holes that are very, very close together if not touching at 40, 35, 40 yards. If you pay under $400, you'll probably get something about like this. And and this gun hasn't gotten broken in yet. Still, the barrel's being seasoned. This is probably the first 100 shots. But, uh, yeah, um, you can you can look out and get you a good Chinese barrel. I'm not saying they're all bad. Um, it's just more work than people usually want to do, um, especially with the all the Crossmans and Benjamins, and you know they're all kind of clones of a Gamo Chinese clone, and 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 the Ruger the Ruger's a clone of a Diana 34. Um, you could do everything and, and get that gun perfect, and if you don't have a good barrel, man, can't do much for you. But this Webley Stingray in 177 with the Quattro trigger is a very fine gun. I love it. It doesn't shoot as hard as most of us would like, but it does shoot harder than the Brits. And it's very good trigger, very a good shot cycle. Um, it's the, the best Webley that I think that you can probably get in America right now.